Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. It certainly is a pleasure to bring up the 93rd report of the Public Works Committee and uh, move that it be noted. This report, as you're aware, is entitled a Tornish Primary School Redevelopment Project. The primary school is located on Saran Avenue, St Agnes, in the city of Tea Tree Gully. The school site has ageing accommodation and transportable amenities requiring relocation. Mr Speaker, this project also forms part of the extraordinary capital works program that the very diligent Minister for Education has been seeing through in the 35 months of this government. The school was allocated funding of five, five million as part of the Department for Education's capital works program. The Department for Education has advised that the proposed primary school project will deliver a total school enrolment capacity of 600 places by 2022. Uh, Tornish Primary School has 545 enrolments as of February 2020. The scope of the redevelopment works at the primary school includes the construction of a new modular building, including general learning areas, breakout spaces with wet areas, student and disability amenities, storage, teacher preparation and withdrawal spaces with connection to the oval and nature play spaces, demolition of ageing buildings and the relocation of transportable amenities to another school site. When complete, the redevelopment project will provide modern educational accommodation meet legislative compliance requirements and deliver the department's benchmark accommodation for students in a primary school. The key outcomes required at the completion of this project are to provide contemporary learning areas that support 21st century learning pedagogy, to develop creative flexible learning spaces to enhance student engagement and allow collaborative teaching practices, and to replace aged buildings with new efficient facilities. The primary school redevelopment project will be staged with construction expected to be completed in the course of this year. The committee examined written and oral evidence in relation to the project and received assurances that the appropriate consultation in relation to this project had been undertaken, Mr Speaker. And I also uh, report to Parliament that the committee is satisfied that the proposal has been subject to the appropriate agency consultation and meets the criteria for the examination of projects set out in the Parliamentary Committees Act 1991. And based on the evidence considered and pursuant to section 12C of the Parliamentary Committees Act 1991, the Public Works Committee reports to the House that it recommends the scope of the proposed public works that I've earlier uh, mentioned. The member for Newland. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I rise with great pleasure today to talk about this project at our Tornish Primary School, a fantastic local primary school within uh, the North East. Uh, I'd like to commend um, firstly the Public Works Committee for all its work, um, but also importantly commend the Marshall Liberal Government for its uh, significant support for school infrastructure, uh, not just in my electorate, but right across our state where we're providing uh, educational uh, institutions that already do a wonderful job in terms of um, their teaching outcomes, uh, but providing them with world-class uh, facilities to back that up. Um, our Tornish Primary School is led by a fantastic team. Uh, Principal Mark Hanson does a wonderful job, as does Deputy Principal Deb Pryor. Uh, and on top of that, it's supported by the broader school community through an energetic uh, governing council led by Catherine Nan. This primary school um, does engage very much with its uh, local community uh, and generally, um, particularly on the, the, the uh, annual Tea Tree Gully uh, Christmas pageant, uh, it holds a local fete uh, on its oval that I've been able to attend a, a number of times, unfortunately not last year due to COVID, but hopefully into the future we'll continue to, uh, to engage the community in this way. Now, Ard Tornish is, is quite a large local primary school uh, with more than 500 students. It's very popular and there's, there's actually in quite incredible demand for it uh, as it has wonderful outcomes for students. Uh, the school is led by Mark Hanson who has uh, a really strong passion uh, and understanding of the importance of uh, literacy in those early years and in fact I was seconded by the department to help roll out the year one phonics check a couple of years ago right across the state. Unsurprisingly, given that, uh, Tornish has some very strong uh, outcomes for literacy in those early years, and, and we know how important it is uh, to get those literacy skills right uh, in the very um, first years of school. Uh, I'm also pleased uh, that uh, our Tornish Primary School was... Uh, participated in my most recent Christmas card competition just at the end of last year. Uh, and uh, the year three, four classes 
um, all entered in their uh, designs. They selected from their own group the top 10 designs, and then from there I was forced to make um, that sort of enviable decision of choosing a winner. And in the end, Max uh, was successful with his surfing Santa design, which I thought was quite, you know, something a bit different. And I know quite a few people through the community who have received these uh, Christmas cards were um, very pleased. Uh, but this, this school community, including past students, are incredibly excited about this upgrade. There's no doubt that there are some very tired and old buildings at our Tornish Primary School that were well due um, for replacement, and in fact some of them have been sort of sinking at one end, and so they're very excited to see this project uh, underway. I visited uh, not that long ago, a number of months ago now, with the Minister for Education and we saw all the temporary uh, prefab uh, modular classrooms being set up, um, which was a, a fantastic setup. A local firm, uh, Centina, uh, was doing this work. And the quality of these, uh, these classrooms, as the Minister for Education mentioned earlier, is not like the old days of the old style of transportables. These really are, um, uh, are very good and, in fact, many of the teachers and students commented on, on how much of a step up even the temporary situation was from what they had. They mentioned it very quietly, of course, because they're still very keen to have the upgrade, um, but nonetheless, we're very pleased with what the temporary classrooms were able to uh, achieve. Uh, the demolition works uh, have been uh, completed for this project and was, uh, construction is about to start um, soon. So what this project will include, so it's a $5 million upgrade, the construction of new uh, uh, modular building, including learning areas, breakout space with wet areas, student disability amenities, storage, uh, teacher preparation and withdrawal spaces with connection to the oval and nature play spaces. I think it'll be a fantastic addition to this um, wonderful school. So I'm very pleased um, for this, pro this school to be benefiting from this, this fantastic project, um, to be benefiting from the support um, from the Marshall government. Uh, this is a fantastic school already, achieving great outcomes for the school community, but now will be backed up uh, and improved even further through um, the construction of these world-class facilities. So I'd like to thank, uh, once again, the Public Works Committee for its work and, and certainly commend this report to the House. I draw honourable members' attention uh, to the presence uh, in the Speaker's Gallery of Mr Norman Shuler, uh, OAM, is chairman of the South Australian Multicultural and Ethnic Affairs Commission. Uh, Mr Shula uh, has also been president of the Jewish Community Council South Australia since 1970, since 1994. Uh, and uh, uh, he's also currently uh, a, a director of the National Australia Day Council. I, I welcome you uh, to the house, Mr Shula. the Minister for Education. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, very pleased to briefly rise and reflect on the Public Works Committee report into the uh, enhancements to our Tornish Primary School that are currently underway. Um, there's not a lot to add to what the member for Newland and the member for Carville have already identified. I will just reflect briefly that when, we, uh, when I visited the, uh, our Tornish Primary School most recently uh, with the member for Newland, uh, it was um, uh, in October last year, late October last year, uh, the temporary accommodation that the school community was going to be using uh, while the, their main area was being demolished and before the new areas uh, were constructed, the temporary accommodation uh, was in the middle of being installed. And looking at some of that temporary accommodation that the students are in at the moment, um, it was definitely the case that there were uh, reflections from staff members on how much better that temporary accommodation was than the facilities that have been at Hard Tornish, highlighting uh, the need for this project, uh, which has probably been building and building and building uh, for a significant number of years. So the government is very pleased to be investing five and a half million dollars uh, in the enhancements to our Tornish Primary School, uh, servicing uh, more than 500 students uh, in the local area uh, around the school. Dust Studio and Fusco Construction and the uh, modular builders uh, outlined by the member for Newland uh, are doing terrific work and Mark Hansen and the team at Ard Tornish uh, are indeed creating the learning environments for their students uh, that will see them thrive and succeed and prosper in the years ahead. Um, the member for Newland identified some of the engagement that the school has had 
uh, with the broader department and schools around South Australia uh, in being able to replicate their steps forward in phonics teaching and early years literacy. And that has seen in uh, Tornish Primary School significant steps forward in recent years. One of the other areas in which our Tornish Primary School uh, is indeed a leader in the state is in their use of the internet, uh, engaging with students in the delivery of their learning uh, throughout their years. And indeed, there are a number of explicit and project-based uh, tasks that the school is able to, to use the internet for. But when we upgraded the speed of the internet uh, at our Tornish Primary School, uh, which was in uh, April 2019 as part of the Marshall Liberal Government's SWIFT internet upgrade program, uh, which took our internet speeds in schools from the slowest on the mainland to the fastest uh, in Australia. Um, the IT guys at Ard Tornish told me that they reckoned that it wasn't the 100 times faster that the department had put in their, uh, their notes for me when I was visiting. Uh, he said that the reliable speed was actually 1,000 times faster than it used to be at that particular site. The difference in what is able to be done at that school, therefore, um, as the teachers were describing, is rather than uh, being hesitant and cautious about in undertaking any lesson planning that involved use of computers and the internet, whereby a, a teacher would be thinking, if we start with everybody attached, uh, uh, working on the internet at, at the beginning of the lesson, if the classroom next door also starts using the internet, half of our students are going to drop out or experience dramatic drops in speeds. That was, that, that was what was facing teachers prior to the upgrade in 2019. Now, uh, the classes across the school are able to be all switched on at once and the speeds of the internet availability are there and they are reliable. And it's that reliability, indeed, that is even more profound uh, in terms of the impact for teachers planning their lessons than the speed uh, alone, although the improvements in speed are, are significant. Um, so now, to go alongside that enhancement of the school's internet infrastructure, uh, we now have the enhancements to the school's built infrastructure, uh, and I can't wait to see the steps forward the school will continue to take uh, in the years ahead. The member for Florey. A few brief remarks about our Tornish Primary School, which is indeed a really remarkable school. And I've had the benefit of being able to watch it grow since the early 1990s, when uh, some people may remember the old Holden Hill North Primary School existed on the site of what is now a, a retirement village. And in those days, when we lost that school, our Tornish was a little school. Um, St Agnes was a much larger school further down the road, but our Tornish was the school that grew and grew under a remarkable line of school leaders and indeed a school community that never knew uh, the word can't. It always made sure it did. And I've been able to sponsor a music prize there for well over 20 years now, and it's been amazing to see the, the children and the growth in their learning. And credit must be given to the current government for, for what is truly an extraordinary capital grants program. Uh, some of the transportables uh, at our Tornish could even be as old as me, I think. I've seen them there <laughs> older, I don't know, but they, they'd certainly be sagging at one side if they were. But some of the transportables in our area, and, and that still exist as learning spaces in our schools in the northeast, um, are well past their use by, by date. So I do commend the government and the minister and also acknowledge his passion for making sure that the internet speed is as fast as it is. Um, as as uh, has been said, the phonics champion in their principal, Mark Hansen, he, he's another person who doesn't know the answer, or doesn't know the word no. And their um, graduation ceremonies every year are always uh, an amazing event, uh, well well supported by the whole school community. And I must also mention that uh, Catherine Nairn, who is retiring as the governing council leader, and her family have made a remarkable contribution to the school. Um, I know every school is grateful for any uh, capital grants works that are done, and I know every school is really anxious to stretch any dollars they are able to use to the utmost, and uh, not necessarily at this particular school, but at other schools. I know that they're often very disappointed when the grants and the works that they think are going to be done meet with uh, unexpected expenses, and, and they then have to lose out or rejig the, the uh, program and building that they have. So it's a real commit, um, a real uh, credit to them that they have managed to squeeze so much out and, and now give their students this 21st century learning space. I know there are, as I said, a lot of schools in the northeast area, in particular 
particularly the Ingle Farm East School that had um, a special school area that needed some refurbishment. So very grateful to the government for all it's done. And I certainly uh, pay uh, my credits to all the people involved in the wider school community who work so hard to make sure that their students have every opportunity in their learning journeys. The member for Carville speaks. He closes debate. The Thank member you. for Carville. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I acknowledge the member for Newland and, and uh, Flory for their passion and commitment to their respective communities and also to the uh, Dornish Primary School um, community. Um, I should emphasise the uh, member for Newland is a very frequent um, inquirer in relation to public works business and an absolute uh, passionate champion for his community and for um, important public works and infrastructure programs that are necessary to uh, support uh, his community and uh, member for, uh, for Flora, um, uh, likewise in relation to projects uh, within, within, her, uh, within her community. And I think it is right uh, for, for me to acknowledge um, Catherine Nan and her work as retiring and governing council chair to see this project through to conclusion. And although members have earlier heard me in relation to this topic, it bears repeating that the Minister has indeed seen through a very substantial capital works program in the, 30, in the 35 months, just 35 months of this government compared to 16 years of the previous government. It is an extraordinary program and one that will be valued by communities, including uh, member for, for Flory and member for Newlands uh, uh, communities in uh, separate communities in, years to, in many years to come and communities right across the state. And for those who believe very passionately in public education, as I do and the Minister does, and uh, those members present do, uh, and all those in this House, um, the value of these assets and improvements simply cannot be overstated. The question before the House is that the 93rd report of the Public Works Committee entitled Our Tornish Primary School Redevelopment Project be noted. Is that seconded? I'll put the question at once. Those of the opinion say aye, against say no. It's carried.